Hi everyone, it's Rach. I'm going to be reading for you The Dinosaur That Pooped a Planet. Danny and Dinosaur liked to have fun. Some days they had lots, some days they had none. One day they were bored. They had no games to play. Danny said, Dinosaur, what shall we do today? We could mow the lawn, we could tidy the place, we could do our chores, or we could go to space. But you mustn't forget to have lunch, said their mummy. You can't have fun without food for your tummy. So they packed a pack lunch for the science museum, where rockets were kept if you wanted to see them. There were hundreds of rockets and spaceship surprises, Tall ones, small ones of all shapes and sizes. And the one that was ready to launch with a door was big enough for a boy and his pet dinosaur. They ignored all the warnings. They couldn't care less. They pressed all the things that they shouldn't have pressed. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Ignition! They started their intergalactic space mission. They flew higher than houses, buildings and cranes, much higher than birds, even higher than planes. We're in space, Danny yelled as they floated around, but the dinosaur's tongue made a rumbling sound. It's time to have lunch. Danny looked at his lunchbox when he looked around for Dino's lunchbox. Danny started to worry. He started to panic. They'd left their lunchboxes back home on their planet. So with no food on board, not the smallest of crumbs, a disastrous dinosaur feast begun. It gobbled up gadgets and gizmos galore. Nothing was safe from this space dinosaur. Robots and ray guns and blinkers, red blinkers, eating up thoughts of NASA's great thinkers. The hyperdrive gamma reactor machine was swallowed along with a space tractor beam. It chewed and it chomped on the spaceship's controls. The rocket was dotted with dino teeth holes. Inside was bare, the spaceship was empty. Outside there were more things to eat, there were plenty. It broke down the door with a cool ninja chop. Out in space, dinosaurs are much harder to stop. It chomped on the moon like a big chunk of cheese. It shoved even more in its mouth with a squeeze. It munched on the Martians from Mars and their cats. Their cats are like ours, but they wear really cool hats. Satellites, Saturn and six supernovas, shape-shifting saucers and seven space rovers. It guzzled five gallons of fuel from the tank. Danny's jaw dropped as he watched what it drank. With a crunch and a crack and a num num num, in one dino gulp, their rocket was gone. Now nothing was left and all Danny could see was a fat dinosaur where their rocket should be. And so they were stranded with no way back home. Just Danny and Dino in space, all alone. Now Danny was crying. He cried and he cried. He cried and his tears filled his spacesuit inside. Unless they were going to stay there forever, Dinosaur needed to do something clever. With a feeling of guilt deep down in his gut, his brain brewed a plan involving his butt. It knew there was only one thing to do to get them back home. He needed to poo! Like a poop-powered rocket, the dinosaur flew. Dan hopped on his back and he watched as he pooed. It pooped out the robots and ray guns and blinkers. The things NASA's thinkers thought up now were stinkers. It pooped out the moon. It pooped out the stars. It pooped out space rovers and Martians from Mars. When Danny looked back, all he could see was a poop trail 
far out in space to the dinosaur's tail. They headed for Earth, they started to orbit. It pooped out the clouds, but the clouds just absorbed it. They flew past the buildings and streets of their town, leaving the houses all smelly and brown, and finally landed back on the ground. Hooray, Danny cried, we are home safe and sound. They looked up at the sky and the things that were pooped had formed a poop planet right next to the moon. And so Danny promised to listen to mummy because fun's not fun without food for your tummy. And just when you thought all the pooing was done, a Mars cap plopped out of the dinosaur's bum. Ew. Bye.